Jesus did say, I and my father are one. So I'm asking the Reverend Dr. Morris, DD, I said, what is the context? Context. He starts staring at me. The biryani is there. <laughs> he kept on staring at me. I said, why, sir? Don't you know what is the context? I said, you see, what you quoted is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. Text. I want the context, the text that goes with it before or after. What is the context? And the man kept on staring at me. As if he didn't understand English. He is DD. I'm D that. <laughs> so he said, Do you know the context? He's asking me. I said, Of course I know the context. So what is the context? I said, Well, let us start from John. That same chapter 10, verse 23. So we start. Usually, my Christian brethren, as soon as you ask for something, they have a Bible under the arm, they take it out. I said, no, put the Bible away. You know what you are... Look, if you quoted me a verse, surely you know, man, in what sense he made that utterance. Put the Bible down. He didn't have a Bible, nor did I. So, what is the context? As a John, we start from verse 23. It reads, and Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem, alone. I don't know why he was tempting the devil, walking alone. You know, he had condemned them for their formalism, their ceremonialism, the going for the letter of the law, forgetting the spirit. He said, you hypocrites, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation. These are all these beautiful epithets he had thrown at them. And... A little while before he had gone into the temple and he made a whip, not a whip, and he started whipping the people and he upset the money exchanges tables and upset their money. Shh. Look, when you do things like that, people have it in for you. And the Jews were not in a hurry to forget the manner in which he had condemned them, the way he had treated them. Now he's alone, no disciples with him, alone. It says, so then came the Jews round about him, means surrounded him. Naturally, they got an opportunity of a lifetime. He's able to pluck them out of my hand. Verse 28. We reach verse 28. Verse 29. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse 30. I and my father are one. No man will pluck them out of my hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. In this to see that once a person has accepted faith, I as a teacher, I see to it that the man remains in faith and God Almighty also sees to it that the person remains in faith. I and my father are one. In this to see the man doesn't go astray. Where is he talking about? He is God Almighty. He is the omnipotent. He is the omniscient. He is the all-knowing. Where? This is the oneness. Look at the verse 28, look at verse 29 and say, this is the oneness. But the Jews were looking for trouble. They wanted to get their own back. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, making kufar. Because that thou being a man makest thyself a god. You are a man and you're claiming to be God. Therefore we want to kill you. We want to stone you. So Jesus says, Is it not written in your law? Law. The Hebrew word for law is Torah. In the Old Testament. The five books of Moses. He says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God. He's quoting from the 82nd Psalm. Where God says, behold, ye are gods, the Jews, all of you are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. 82nd Psalm. He's quoting. He says, is it not written in your law? He's sarcastic. Is it not his law? Also, of course it is. 
But since you are arguing and debating with him, you say, look, in your law, is it not written such and such? And the scripture cannot be broken, meaning you can't contradict me. You can't contradict me what I'm telling you. It's there, man, in your book. Have a look. Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest, because I said I'm the Son of God. He said, look, it means nothing, man. To say I'm the Son of God means nothing. God has got sons by the tons in the Bible. It's a metaphorical statement. Godly people are called sons of God, and he's got them by the tons. No exaggeration. I'm not exaggerating. By the tons. He's got sons. Metaphorically. God doesn't beget. Metaphorically, we are all his children. Is it not written in your law? Such and such. So if, even if I said I'm God, according to the Jewish usage, there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm only claiming to be a son of God. But the Jews were looking for trouble. Can't you see? And when you're looking for a fight, Oh, any excuse will do. Where does he say, I am God? Where does he say, worship me? So the DD had another idea. He said, you know, in the first chapter of John, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word is Jesus. So he's God. I am asking, where did Jesus say that he is God, or where did he say, worship me? These are the words of a Jewish philosopher called Philo. Long before Jesus was born, he wrote this in his own book. This, our John, or whoever he was, he plagiarized it. He stole that man's writing, and he put it into the New Testament in his own gospel. Plagiarized it. Word for word. But never mind. Whatever Philo had in his mind, we won't go into that. I'm asking the reverend. I said, do you know Greek? He said, yes. I did Greek for five years before qualification. I said, in that case, you can help me. I said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. I said, what is the Greek word there for God? And he started staring at me. It seemed as if the game was up. I said, the word there is hothios. In Greek. And Hothios means the God. Which you put a capital G. Proper noun. You see, the Western nations, they have a system. That when you have a common noun, you put a small letter. And when you have a proper noun, you put a capital letter. You know that. Common noun, small letter, proper noun, capital letter. So, for the God, it becomes proper, definite article. So, they put a capital G. Very good, that's your system. But I said, and the word was God. What is the Greek word there for God? No answer. I say, it's tontheos. Means a God. And for a God means any God. Means a godly person. It should have a small g. But I says, you know what? In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in the Bible, it says here, and the devil is the god of this world. The devil is the god of this world. And in Greek, the word is hothios, the god. I said, why did you give the devil a small g? Why are you grudging him a capital G? So why do you play fast and lose with the book of God? You, whenever it suits you, whatever suits you, you know, you put capital letters where it suits you and small letters where it suits you. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a God to Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. A God to Pharaoh and you give Moses a small g. Why? For a word, W-R-D word, they put a capital G. But for Moses, they give him a small g in the Bible. So why do you do that? He said, I didn't do it. I said, I know you didn't do it. But I said, the vested interest that you represent, why do you play fast and loose with the book of God? If this is the book of God, why do you play fast and loose with it? This is it. This is our complaint. Why aren't you consistent? Because if you are consistent, perhaps all these problems wouldn't arise between us. Now, the only thing that is left that can make Jesus God, as the Christians say, is that he gave life to the dead 
and this is the prerogative of God. Very true. He still the storm. The Quran doesn't go into any details about his miracles. The only detail is about him speaking as an infant. That's the only detail. The rest is, it tells us that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. He healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. He gave to life to the dead by God's permission. We accept. But the details, no details in the Quran. The Quran is not a book of stories.